It's called a promo, Shut kid. Your and mouth, if you want to be the big dog, you're going to have to learn how to do it. So go Are ahead. Are you ready? No, I said, Are you ready? That was good. Glad you finally decided to pull that giant stick out of your butt and have some fun for once in your life. You're uneducated, Marks. You sit there on your phones, tweeting out your opinions like they're worth the damn. Let me explain something to you people. You don't know shit. And I'd like to think that maybe this company will be better after Vince McMahon's death. All right. It's just me, Oofs. It's just me again here on the second episode ever of Lita live in the arena and I am now going to go over the March 8th edition of Friday Night Smackdown at the American Airlines Center which was a fucking blast let me tell you oh my goodness was it electric there and I don't say that just because The Rock was there it was electric because the energy was impalpable it was I can't even explain it so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in uh play you know the videos such and such so on so forth loved this section again if you're gonna get cheap seats in the american airline center i've told everybody and their grandmothers this if you're gonna get cheap seats in the american airline center get this section i'll have to look the section up for you i think it's like 217 or something like that i'll get it for you officially but it is awesome it's like a little section that only seats 16 people and then above you is uh the balcony and you know camera level stuff so that said yeah i'm gonna pull it up for you at the end of the episode tune into there and it's a great section again you want to spend little money at the american airlines center and get good seats go to this section i'll tell you at the end of the episode let's continue on uh, i just get so ahead of myself I really do. I'm so excited to like go over this SmackDown with you guys. I've been excited since the night I was there. I drove home that night thinking, I can't wait to go and put this on the podcast. And we've been so busy on this Road to WrestleMania season. Been so fucking busy. But that said, it's high time I got into this footage. Super, super fun night. Some good old wrestling before the show. Nothing like a good dark match to really warm you up. And I felt like on this night there were more people watching the dark matches uh, than there were the Monday night at Raw on March 4th. Which, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out episode 1 of Lita, uh, the Monday night Raw on March 4th, the same week. Awesome episode, again, awesome that we finally got the Lita thing officially going. But for whatever reason, I felt like people were like just more in tune. Oh, shout out Wade Barrett. People were more in tune to watching the full wrestling product start to finish when they came to SmackDown this night. I mean, dark matches to dark matches. Ah, uh, fucking Logan Paul. I hate that I have to include this, that this is relevant. Ugh. I thought they were fucking trolling me, man. Uh, I didn't even know who KSI was. I'm sorry, guys. I don't even know who he is. I'm not a, like a YouTube culture type of guy. Uh, I have friends that are, and they can tell me all about him, but I didn't know who he was, and I'm not too particular on Logan Paul based on the fact that he owes a lot of people money, um, and he filmed a dead guy. That That's just my whole thing, personally. Um, but going forward, on the wrestling part, I did not believe truly in this moment that Prime Logo thing was real. I thought this was a work. I thought this was something that was just going to be a part of a storyline. The more this seems legit to me, I still don't want to believe it, but the more this seems legit to me, the more I'm like, what the fuck are they thinking? If you're going to put something in the middle of the ring, at least make it look nice. This looks ugly as hell. Continue on. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I told you guys this is going to be a good one. But like the prime bottle, really? Okay, I'm, okay. Randy Orton, guys. Randy Orton. The voices in my head. The voices in my head. The voices in my head. I'm ready to go. Where the fuck is he, bro? 
I feel like if Randy Orton doesn't come out in like 10 seconds, you should know what the fuck's about to happen. <laughs> this fucker doesn't know what's about to happen. It's over. It's over, Grover. Turn around. Feel the pound. Ouch. It's probably like my seventh RKO to see live, but they are. They get more and more beautiful as they go. Aging like a fine wine, the RKO. I still, I still in the back of my mind have to believe that this is a work. For me to keep going, I have to believe that. Little Randy Orton. Little Randy Orton for your TV screens. Mm, classic. Rumor has it that that man hears voices in his head. Oh, sorry. I was getting a little into it back here. Tag Team Wrestling is the best. Who said what about Carlito? I heard someone in the crowd say something about Carlito just then. Everybody loves tag team wrestling. Let's go. You know, I was coming with the remixes today. For y'all that don't know where I came from before wrestling podcasts, I came from the music industry. That's why they call me Baby Basilli. That was my artist name. Just a little fun fact. A little, a little shameless plug there, too. If anybody want to go check out some of my music. I still make music from time to time, but my main priority is this show here and going over this wrestling footage. <laughs> I almost skipped over one. Which, this is like a heftier video too. I can't believe I almost skipped over it. Oh man, the tag. The tag on your mattress. Don't rip it off. Oh, what a scoop slam. As fluid as it gets. Thousands of people have seen it. Thousands of people have said it. You can't say it enough, man. Randy Orton is as fluid as it gets in professional wrestling. You know who else has amazing fluidity? Swerve Strickland. Swerve Strickland is the next Randy Orton. I repeat, Swerve Strickland is the next Randy Orton. I set it up in here. I put it out there. Oh, that spot is fucking beautiful. That spot is fucking beautiful. Anybody else want to replay that one? Check it out again. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay guys, I need a favor. One more time. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Alright, we'll move on. WrestleMania Sun, everybody point to it right now. That should be the main event of night one. Everybody else say it with me. That should be the main event of night one. Bailey and EO Sky. Point to the WrestleMania sign again. Lasers. Yeah, lasers. Dude, what you know about them lasers? Pop it. Oh, that was a loud ass whistle. I love doing the bump, bump. Th 
this was like the only match I really knew I was getting to watch too going to SmackDown. It's like, well, I'm gonna see Bobby Lashley and Carrie and Adam Cole cooked me cross. It was a decent match though. Let's like let's give it credit where credit is due. It was a decent match. Uh, I'm not a Carrie and Cross fan, but his his real name fully pronounced. If if you don't recall, we said it in season one, but his full name uh, all the way pronounced is Carrie and Adam Cole cooked me cross. So just a little reminder for you to like keep in mind when you're going to your next live event. That is how you pronounce his name fully. If you want to seem smart, if you want to be a smart mark. Call him that. Hmm. Carrying Adam Cole picks me across. I remember when we played the promo on the show and I couldn't get enough of it. I was like, we should play this promo every week. <laughs> NXT Adam Cole fucks the world, man. <laughs> fucks the world. Real FTW champion, I'm tell you. I'm letting my wrestle with this water. Little bit of wrestling. Again, I said it on episode one of Live in the Arena. I have the full Cody Rhodes Rock segment. I didn't mean to. I just kind of got caught up in the moment how awesome of a segment that was. So when we get to Cody Rhodes and the Rock, remember, we're going to watch the whole thing from a live fan perspective. And I think that that's really cool. Like, you've seen it on TV, but seeing it from a live fan perspective adds a little bit of flavor. I feel like that's my opinion. Bit of an ugly clothesline. A little ugly clothesline. What's he doing with him on this? Okay. Adam Cole might have cooked him, but he did that. He did that, driver. Ah, oh, man, don't ruin this. How dare they ruin this classic? This absolute classic. I'm sorry. Hey, the Hurt Prophets. Damn, they can run fast. Them profits are moving fast. I keep, I'm sorry to say this, I keep forgetting AOP's a thing, and like, I get, they're in this uh, storyline that's supposed to be relevant, I and mean, I, I just forgot their thing, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, AOP. I mean no disrespects. You know what, and I'm sure they probably don't take it that way. They probably want to be booked in a way that's memorable. I'm sure they want to be booked better. Everybody does. Amen, Bobby. Bum, bum. Oh, don't do this. Don't do this. Man, why you gotta hide, though? There you go. Get in the ring. Show your face. Slap her in hers. Bum, bum. I can't stop doing the Bobby Lashley thing. The lock, it's a hurting. Damn. 
Can't win for losing, can ya? Oh, poor Dawkins. There goes Montez. I remember at one time, I thought Montez Ford could be the U.S. champion. I was like, yeah, that U.S. title might just go to Montez Ford, and that'd be really awesome. He deserves that singles push, and I guess we didn't really do that, did we? But I thought, but I thought. I bring the swag like nobody can. This should be stuck in my head. Dude, I cannot explain to you the energy that Dallas brought for Tippy. It was Tippy time in the American Airlines Center. I mean, like, I. I fuck with Tiffany Stratton. I think she's a great talent. I've been an advocate of her since I really got into the NXT stuff going on. Dylan put me on. Shout out to my co-host Dylan. I I got on to Tiffy time just about the same time everyone else did, but I was not expecting the reaction that she got this night. I mean, she's more over than I, I even thought she was. That's crazy to say. That's why... It, I'm putting Tiffany Stratton in for Money in the Bank winner. I mean, point blank period, I think Tiffany Stratton could win Money in the Bank. Hall of Fame inductees at that time, which now we have the full Hall of Fame inductee list, of course, but U.S. Express, Paul Heyman. Man, Paul Heyman being in the Hall of Fame really, really hit me hard. I was like, Finally, recognition you deserve, man. He's a hothead. He's a hardhead. He's a visionary. A revolutionary. He has all those things and more. Mm. Nice little tummy chop. Little gut check time. Get out there. I'm gonna order a pizza after this. Oh, don't slam her like that. That Alabama slammer. You got it. Thing of beauty. Were you surprised? Good time. Alright, we got Odell Fantastic. Do y'all think Tiffany Stratton's gonna win money in the bank too? I mean, I think Tiffany Stratton's gonna win Money in the Bank, but y'all y'all think it too, right? Like I wanna have a group consensus. Y'all hit us up at uh Wrestling Middle on Twitter. Let me know, do you think Tiffany Stratton's gonna win Money in the Bank? Because I think she's going to. Alright, Dragon Lee. Admittingly. I took a bathroom break real quick right after his entrance. I got his entrance on film a little bit. I was like, bathroom's right behind me. I'm gonna go run right there, pee as quick as I can, come back. So, I had to take a little bathroom break here, but I'll come back. In fact, I might have taken it mid-match because I got the ring bell right then, so I got the solid match. 
I know on uh, if you guys watched the first Lita episode that we dropped, the Monday Night Raw one. I uh, didn't even realize where I took the bathroom break, and I was like, "How the fuck did we get here? Women's tag match? Oh yeah, I just came back from the bathroom." It's hard to keep up, man. What a what a badass time it was! Just on this road to WrestleMania to go to Raw and SmackDown as they rolled through Texas and really just experience like a different type of live energy. It's it's a whole new world. And I went to the Raw after WrestleMania 38. Admittingly, just not the same feel as I thought it would be for a Raw after WrestleMania. I really looked forward to going to Raw after WrestleMania my whole life, and it didn't live up to my expectation. But at the same time. A lot of cool shit happened. I mean, it was the first uh, Raw Cody Rhodes was on back in WWE. It was a really big, really big deal looking back at it. Likewise, not what I expected, but that will be an episode for another time. Let's keep rolling here. That's going to be an interesting episode. I really got to dig back in the files to get that one, too. That was a couple years ago now. And that's crazy to think about. We're at WrestleMania 40. That was WrestleMania 38 when Cody Rhodes came back. What a journey it's been. Dare I say, what a story. Ow. That had some torque on it, for sure. We got all of that bomb. You know what time it is. One's up in the air, buddy. One's up in the air. Oh, this guy. He said, I'm all in on it. <laughs> when you got the lasers like that? Come on, man. The fucking lasers tell it all. The fucking lasers tell you everything you need to know. And that guy can affirm, and that guy, sorry, can confirm everything I'm saying. He can affirm it too. You know, while, while we're fucking up, he can affirm it. He can make it feel good. <laughs> yes. Who? Eh. That's fair. Umaga 2.0, everybody. You did. Hey, he he did that. Rome fucking did that. Acknowledge Mike Rome in that moment. He fucking did that. Put him up. Are we gonna film that guy again? Did we film that guy twice? Nah. He he only got the one cameo. Ah, oh, I love SmackDown, man. You gotta get one for the sign one time, man. Packed ass arena. Everybody point at the WrestleMania sign. Everybody point at it one time. Alright, Sly. We got some pictures of the SmackDown sign during that. Oh my goodness, man. What an experience. I had never seen the Rock Live before. That's what was so big about this to me. Man. It was already electric that night, but after this, whole other kind of electricity. Just a whole ball of energy that enters when he enters in the room. It comes right with him, and it exerts out into the crowd. It's crazy. It's realistic, though. If you've been there, you know. And you see how many lasers he has. He's got a lot of lasers, so. I'm telling you, the lasers will tell you what you need to know about the wrestler, the superstar. 
Oh, I had to get this. I knew what was coming. Let's fucking go. The child in me that was alive in this moment. The absolute joy that fills my, my heart and my soul. Oh, I fucking loved every minute of this experience. I, every minute of this experience was magic. And thank you, thank you to the universe, the heavens. Thank you for allowing me to see The Rock on this night, March 8th, on Friday Night Smackdown. Oh, that was literally just an accidental clip segment. My bad. What's up? What's up? Greatness stands before you now. Where it at? No. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. They're really great. They're really great. The final moments in Roman Reigns' title reign. Really, really soak it in. What an absolute journey this has been to acknowledge him, man. Throw the ones up. Throw the twos up if you feel like maybe one is just not enough. Aw, oh, shit. Aw, oh, shit. Let's go. I'm gonna show you how it's done. I'm Cody Rhodes. I'm Cody Rhodes. My name is Cody Rhodes. My name is Cody Rhodes. Yeah, that's my name. I'm Cody Rhodes. I'm Cody Rhodes. My dad is Dusty Rhodes. My name is Cody Rhodes. And that's my name. Cody. I'm Cody Rhodes That's my name My dad is Dusty Rhodes I'm Cody Cody Rhodes, I'm Cody, Cody, Cody Rhodes Yeah, that's my name Cody Rhodes, I'm Cody, Cody, Cody Rhodes My dad is Dusty Rhodes Yeah, Cody's my name Cody Rhodes, yeah, that's my name my dad is Dusty Rhodes I'm Cody Rhodes Alright, I'm done. I'm done, guys. I'm done. My bad. That was hilarious. That was fucking funny as hell. I'm sorry. Let me get a sip of water. Y'all enjoy the rest of this. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> Voice cracking and shit. I'm Cody <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. Y'all deserve better than this. Fucking love, love it. I love excessively recording the segment. He's gonna rule that motherfucking kingdom. Oh. 
Oh. I saw that sign outside in the fucking parking lot. What was crazy. Knowing that the, the diarrhea Dwayne sign that that person made was going to get held by Seth Rollins. Fucking crazy, man. Again, I can't say it enough. This night was just a fucking memory that will be etched in my brain till the end of time. Till the end of my time, anyway. <laughs> and God willing, it's a long time from now. I love doing this show, and I want to do this show for many years to come. Every time. Every time. Quiet on the set. Can we please have quiet on the set? I'm just kidding. Don't get quiet. Nearing the end of this long ass video. About to switch over to the next long ass video. I think. If I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah. I'm going to have another long ass video after this. We'll see. I think I probably stopped so I could sing and you guys not have to hear me doing that because I sound awful when I'm doing that one. When I'm doing the Seth Rollins song, yeah, I sound fucking awful. So I probably was like, let's stop this, sing the song, resume recording. Sure enough. Amen, brother. Amen. And you deserve it. I think perhaps the four of us should take a moment. Feel this. Feel it. Right here. Soak it in. in a sold out Dallas, Texas. Let us scream at you now. Gotta have them some Cody Rhodes. You gotta love it. Rock, I have heard your challenge. And I've heard the, the stipulations that come with said challenge yes. for a match, this match, a tag team match at WrestleMania. Yes, at the one and only WrestleMania 40 where we're headed guys road to Wrestlemania did he just say that? I mean, questioning I his authority eek I think he's insinuating that he is a bitch I don't know though I cannot say for sure that seems to be what he is insinuating I had chills the moment he got on the mic. I said, holy shit, The Rock on the microphone. Let's go. My inner child. I can't say enough with a lie. I was so, so into this. I love it all. I love every minute of this. Absolutely free. Wow, that sounds really nice. You will be free to achieve that story and the dream of your dad. Now, 
For the record, his dad is Dusty Rhodes, in case nobody knew. Ah, two diarrhea chants in one week. How lucky could a guy be? Just let that continue for the rest of the time being. The rest of this video is just that. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't leave yet. It's about to get really good. That doesn't sound ideal. That's it. Do you accept? Will you shut the hell up? Well, well, well. For once in your life, will you shut the hell up? We know the stakes. The future of the industry is on the line. We get that. But you listen to me, and you listen to me good, Mr. Midlife Crisis. You listen to me, bucko. Well. <laughs> oh my God. You just gonna let him answer for you? You, you must be an idiot. You must be from Texas or something. Whoa, hey, brother. Come on, man. That hurts my feelings a little bit. Slightly, maybe. Oh. Let me think on it. I'm not that offended now. <laughs> That's it. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, you don't get another shot. Your story is over. Nah. It's done for you now. <laughs> I don't like that. I do not like that idea. And let the rock tell you something. And let the rock tell you something, you walking cloud emoji. Piece of shit. You shut your mouth. And you listen to the rock. And you listen to the rock. Because it comes down like this. The rock will do everything in his power to make sure that you don't win and to make sure that title goes away. The rock is a director of the board of TKO, which means it owns WWE, which means he's your boss and your boss. Damn. Some would say he's the final boss. Cody Rhodes, listen to the rock. With everything in the rock's guts, if you do not complete this. Undertaker story, has more final win, boss vibes, but. You will never if anybody's the final boss, it's Mako Satomura. Well, we'll say that now. Serena, I love you. You're not the final boss, it's Mako Satomura. Look at the rock's eyes. La Familia. Yes. Dusty. That you're the youngest of three. That's true. And isn't it true that your sister was a cheerleader for the Dallas Cowboys? Pop. And isn't it true? Uh, my old that your brother, your brother is a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. Yeah, and you're Let's 20 go, years younger than your siblings. Is that right? Yes, this is true. You know this why? is true. Because you. Shut the fuck up. No way, that's not true. Yeah, let him go. Iconic moment. Iconic moment. Oh, filmed it all. Iconic ass moment. This is what we're doing.
this is what we are doing. In this business, that's called a receipt. It's a hell of a receipt too. That is a hell of a receipt. Do the rock music, I'm out of here. <laughs> Walking away without a fight. Mm. At the same time though, we all know the fight was a coming. It's fucking past Monday on Raw, but that was the most final boss scene I've ever seen. A bloody Cody Rhodes being beaten in the rain. The Rock looked like a hard motherfucker right there. Not, not here in this scene. He looked like a little bitch right here on this SmackDown. But you fast forward to this past Monday Night on Raw, yeah. He don't look like a bitch now, does he? I'm just trying to stay impartial, guys. I'm just enjoying the road, the ride. It's a hell of a journey. That music could go for hours. We could just sit here and listen to The Rock's music for hours and I would be satisfied. I'd be okay with it. You'd probably leave. You'd probably get tired, get bored, go home, but I'd stay here. Now Cody and Seth gotta get there. Their pop going. Uh, company Cody, everybody. Company man Cody. There you go. Switch that music over. Alright, you thought it was over? Nah, just cause that was the end of SmackDown doesn't mean that's the end of this. Now we're at the dark matches. I see title match. It's just me, oos. Jey Uso getting an Intercontinental title match. Getting yeeted up. That's hilarious. Oh, he going to chop Gunther. He, he made a mistake when he did that. You would have thought that I would have been tired by this point of the night. Nah, nah. After the Rock segment, I was <laughs> wired up, ready to go, excited to watch some wrestling. Especially starting with Jay Uso and Gunther. Intercontinental title match. Like, you already know who's going to win it, right? But 
We enjoy it nonetheless. You know, I think about all the kids in the arena that are probably thinking like, yo, what if Jey Uso wins the Intercontinental title tonight? That would be awesome. Changes everything. Like, I remember being a kid and thinking the title could change hands, but only one time in live event history has that happened. In, in like, you know, modern era. But like, pre-television era doesn't count for sure. Everybody wants tables. Yeet. He gonna yeet through the ropes. You heard a yeeting up? You heard a heating up? This is yeeting up. Eat up. Eat up, everybody. Are you hungry? Well, let's eat. He didn't eat through the ropes. That was anti-climatic. Oh, eat him up. Damn, don't eat his shirt off. Hey, that's not your property to give away, sir. Uh oh, Grody. And then he still gave it away with boogers on it. The fucking contamination scare. He wants to send us back to COVID era where he's wrestling in front of nobody, I guess. What the fuck? What the yeet is going on here, guys? Keep your boogers to yourself. Let's not spread germs and let's keep viruses and pandemics down. We don't want another fucking quarantine. Although, honestly, we quarantine, my business succeeds. I'm going to be in this studio all day, episodes, every day. Shout out to the construction crew. <laughs> construction crew pulling up, getting ready to take down the stage and shit. But they're like, hey, let's watch this banger of a match. They all sitting there like, dog, I'm so glad I got to watch Jey Uso. But you can't slam him. He slammed him. Yeet up. He's yeeting up. Eat him up. Eat him up. Okay. Smooth as a motherfucking baby butt. Yeah, baby didn't expect that. He almost eated him. He almost eat him right there. To yeet or not to yeet. Day, sir, I got yeets to make. Some guy spear. He thought that spear was the end of it. He thought that was motherfucking Roman Reigns spear. He thought that was the Edge spear. He thought that was Batista spear. Oh shit! That was a close call. Oh, nothing like a good roll up. No way, like little schoolboy action. Mm. 
Mm. What a bop. What a bop of a theme song. Second dark match. Nia Jax versus Becky Lynch. Again, we saw this like three times this week. I said that on episode one of Lita when we were doing the Raw episode. Watch them wrestle each other live three times. This being the third. And this one probably being the best one because it wasn't an actual match. You'll see what I mean in a second. First the man. First the man. Choked out, loped out, blowing hell of smoke out. Let's go, Becky Lynch. Y'all can't see me. I'm dancing. Look at me, Dad. I'm dancing. If nobody knows why I say, look at me, Dad. I'm dancing, go watch the DX DVD and you'll see what I mean. You had to be there during 06 DX era. You'll know what I mean if you were there, because you'll get it instantly like that. Boink. Boink with the baseball slide. Action. Motherfucking chair. I was like, did Sherry get... There it is. Yeah, Sherry sure, got disqualified. Okay. That's what had happened. I, I didn't know if I got that part or not, but the match had ended in disqualification and they just started fighting after that. Ah, yes. This photo I took. I'm glad this photo's in here. This is me with my WWF championship. Attitude Era shit. Uh, I always think it's Stone Cold when I see this belt. But that's the belt I brought with me to the show. I always keep a belt with me at the show and you want to know where i got that belt triple b belt sponsored of today's episode and last week i fucked their ad up you know we shoot straight from the hip here at wrestling in the middle all our shit is unfiltered unscripted we just go and so my bad last week for fucking up the triple b ad but luckily they didn't mind i made up for it so Again, here we go today. Cheap in price, not in quality. Triple B belts. That's where I got that belt. I got it with me again in the studio here today. You can get yours from them. eBay, Mercari, Etsy. That's where they sell at. Go check them out. Alright, back to the match. Not like a little ad, right? Back to the match, quote unquote. Again, this no longer was an actual match. This was just a fight. So, back to the fight, I should say. We did get tables, and you know, we want tables. Oh, I don't care for the stairs. Psych, I actually love stair spot. What do you mean? I love stair spot. That girl really, really didn't want Becky to go into that post. Fuck yeah. This is how many people stayed for the dark matches. Quite an amount of people, I would say. Set that table up. No interest in stuff. I got real quiet getting back into it. It was a nice cooler, too, getting ready to like exit the arena, go back home. So much fucking energy amped up. Those dark matches really hit the spot after the show, I'm telling you. Let's go. Table spot. I love table spots. As a wrestling fan, do you love good table spots? I bet you do.
Go home speech. Go home speech. Go home speech. She called her a bitch. And you guys have been an incredible crowd tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you, Becky. I really enjoyed myself. I've had some amazing memories in Dallas, Texas. Shoot. I know one. My first WrestleMania was in Dallas, Texas. And I was rooting for you, girl. I was rooting for you that I night. I went to the Raw after that WrestleMania. It was fun. No way, Jose. That sucks. Don't want to see her lose again. I don't want to see it, but at the same time, Becky, I just I'm predicting it based on where I'm trying to get the story to go. Based on your schedule, Becky, I think maybe you're gonna lose this match. I'm sorry. Rooting for you, girl. Rooting for you, though. I've planted a seed of doubt. Mm -mm. And that seed has grown into a tree with branches and leaves and roots. And it is wrapping around the whole world. But there is something that you need to remember about the man is that when yes. people believe in me, mm -hmm. I am good. But when people doubt me, yeah. I am great. Yes. Amazing. That was really good. Turn up. Turn up. Dallas, Texas, thank you so much for being an amazing crowd. Get home safe. I love you all. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So I'm sure you probably recognize the end of that go home speech uh, was further on Monday Night Raw the next Monday used again and I knew that because I was there at Smackdown Live when she did the go home speech but that Smackdown go home speech was her practice for what she said Monday Night on Raw following that so a little fun fact there if you caught it if you didn't eh, it's whatever little, little Becky theme song action and mostly just me you know getting my last shot of the arena what a lovely night it was. Of course, I like to keep my promises. So as I told you, end of the episode, I'm going to go look up what section I was in that night because I want you guys to know that this is an amazing section to get if you're going to a, a, a if you're going to the American Airlines Center, sorry, and you want some cheap seats but you want good cheap seats, these are the ones to go to. So let me pull it up on my phone. Got to sign in to Ticketmaster here. Don't let me say my email out loud. I almost did that. Is there anyone else like that where they always have to say their shit out loud as they're typing it? I'm trying not to be that guy right now, desperately. Sign me in. Sign me in. There we go. Let's go to the past ones. Well, it won't let me see those. All right, let's go. Just show me the American Airlines Center. Hell of a fucking arena, too. It's one of my favorites. Uh, where I went to the Raw after WrestleMania. Where I went to Halloween Raw. I had to think on that, though. So, I am correct. It is 207. You book 207, that section right there, you are golden. Let me, let me pull up the map here. I'm going to screenshot the map so I can post it onto this episode so you guys can see. It is one of the best fucking slots. And with that screenshot and posting that to the show, I must bid you adieu. But thank you for tuning in to the second episode of Live in the Arena. Get ready for the third. I don't know which show I'm pulling out my back pocket, but I'm going to surprise you guys with a good one, I'm sure. So thank you again. 